Good morning, church. Our live stream today is for Sunday, May 16th, 2021, the seventh Sunday after Easter, the Sunday before Pentecost. Welcome. Those of you who are watching on the live stream, uh, it's uh, good to have you with us. Those here in the parking lot, it's good to see everybody again. It feels good to be back. Uh, I have one announcement. The bulletins are not complete prints. You have uh, the opening portion, you have the hymns, but you do not have the text of the sermon and the other materials. If you wish to follow those, those would be available if you can get the uh, email on your cell phone. Uh, for those who are live stream, if you can double screen uh, from the uh, email that went out. So at this point, let us begin our worship to God. Please join me in our opening prayer. O oh Lord, our God and Father, your law is our delight and it is our meditation every day and night. We know that we prosper when we live by your law and guidance. We know that you and your Son, Jesus Christ, watch over us and protect us. May we pass on that guidance and love as we model your way for those around us and those to come after us. Let us all rejoice and sing our praise to you forever. Amen.
As people who follow in the footsteps of Jesus, let us lift our voices in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 through 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, together the crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language Hakeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his homestead become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it, and let another take his, po his position of overseer. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Our gospel this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and no one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. 
I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. The word of God for the people of God. Amen.
We pray for each other every day. Some of us are part of the congregation's prayer, brand, prayer band. Some pray in groups, some pray individually. We pray for people we know and love. We pray for those we don't personally know. We pray in time of stress. We pray in time of sadness. We pray in time of joy. We pray. In the Gospel reading this morning, we see Christ in a deep moment of stress. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane on Maundy Thursday, after he and his disciples had had their last meal together, the origin of our Sacrament of Communion. It seems odd that seven weeks after Easter, we're looking back at a moment near the end of Christ's life a few days before the resurrection. But here we are, looking back, when we think we should be celebrating and preparing for next week's remembrance of Pentecost, what some people think of as the birthday of the church. We know this scene. Christ and his followers have gone out to the foot of the Mount of Olives to seek a quiet time to rest and pray. But this version in John is different from the other Gospels. John doesn't tell us that this is the garden. He doesn't tell us many things. We add them in as we read, having so thoroughly absorbed the story from the other Gospels. They've become a blend of all four Gospels without dividing those sources. We don't have the details of Christ praying three different times in the evening. We don't have the tale of the disciples falling asleep or Christ telling Peter that he will deny the Lord three times before the dawn. John is always different in what and how he tells his version of the story. The Gospel of John troubles many since it's a different view of familiar stories but we get so many quotes and themes from John, such as, but take heart, I have overcome the world. It's a matter of focus. When I was studying the stories about the garden on this last evening of Christ's life, some sources didn't even bring John into the discussion. What John is doing here is taking an intensely personal moment of that evening. Christ is in deep in prayer and he's talking to the Heavenly Father about what is happening. This is the gospel intent on proving Christ's divinity and focusing on the individual connection that Christ had and which all true believers can have. It is in a way a statement of personal belief which can then be shared and become each follower's belief. Christ is the Son of God. He made God's word known in the world of man. He resumed his place with the Father, having prepared a group of successors to keep the world going. By the way, it's in John and not in the other Gospels that uh, it says or implies that Christ's ministry was three years. The others imply one year. There is no mention of, if it is thy will, take this cup from me. There is instead a deeply personal statement of what Christ has done to prepare for what is to come. He's made God's name known where it was not. He has taught the way of God's world to others in order that they may pass it on and keep the message going as widely through the world as possible. Christ knows what is coming and admits it. That is the key to the central portion of this reading. This is personal. Prayer is personal, which is what Christ said in another part of the story. Go to your room. Close the door and pray to your Father who is on scene. That's in Matthew chapter 5. 
this version of that final night and this section of the story is sometimes called the great prayer or the prayer for the disciples. Christ prays to his Father, God, 